Hello everyone, it's Al Nygren again, the executive director and curator of the New Jersey Film Festival. We're based at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and we're back for the Spring 2019 Film Festival. We have a wonderful lineup of films. We had 22 films that were selected from 564 entries, which is a world record for us. We never get that many, and it was really very competitive. The 22 films were selected by a jury of 16 people, which are media professionals, artists, previous winners, student interns, as well as faculty members. And they are the ones that picked these 22 films. And at EBTV, we're proud to be in our, I guess it's a decade long run of having interviews with filmmakers and local filmmakers. And today we have a uh, the return of the prodigal son. <laughs> Zach Morrison is from East Brunswick, New Jersey, and he's going to be presenting his wonderful musical short film entitled Everything's Fine, A Panic Attack in D Major. Welcome, Zach. Thank you, thank you. It's so nice to see you. Absolutely. So tell us about the motivating factors behind making this film. Oh, man. So, uh, well, I love, I love musicals. I grew up on them, um, you know, Rodgers and Hammerstein, and then my favorite film of all time is The Blues Brothers. So. The, the genre has always been something I love doing, and um, you know, in, in college, a lot of my shorts had music involved in it. So um, when it got time to do my, my MFA thesis film at Columbia, I wanted to do something that could incorporate uh, musicals somehow, and then um, coupled that with you know dealing with the the struggles of grad school and turning 25 and getting out in the world, and having no idea what I'm doing with my life. Uh, mm. It felt like the, the time to bring everything together and do a musical about the quarter life crisis. Yeah. And the, and the gal, Zoe, who plays the lead, she's absolutely brilliant. She's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, Carly, Carly, the actress, Carly Blaine, she was phenomenal. Uh, working with her was such a joy. And she was actually the first person that walked in the audition room uh, when we were doing cold calls and just immediately set the bar. And everyone else who came in were just like, oh, it's not Carly, it's not Carly. So she was, she was great. Yeah, and she carries the film. And I think, I, I guess that it is somewhat autobiographical then. I mean, but you've changed the gender. Yeah, the, I had to like. I wanted to make a film that was close to my life and my experience, but also make it something relatable and something that you know uh, could bring a, a, a wide audience in to enjoy it. So, um, yeah. changed a few things, added a few personal details. But I mean, you'd, I had a smile through the whole thing, <laughs> and it's just very pleasant. And I and I thought, yeah, I guess Zach really liked La La Land, and and then <laughs> we were just talking. Now you said you didn't even I, see I have, it. I haven't seen La La Land yeah, yet. It's all it's on my list though. I'm I'm incredibly behind on. on I mean, everything. the lighting is very similar because the way that the piece is lit, it starts off very bright, and it does kind of follow the train of the day, which I think is really quite beautiful, where, you know, at the end there's this very beautiful sunset scene in Central Park. I guess it's Central Park, right? It was, it's actually my parents' backyard, but I'm glad you thought it was Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, the, mu the magic of movies. Yeah. So, but it is mostly shot in New York City. Mostly in New York City. I've been, yeah. been living in New York for the last five years now, um, so I wanted to do something that was close to home and incorporate part of my hometown and also part of where I've been living for the last couple of years and, and make it a real sort of New York experience. Because that's what a lot of, at least uh, students from around here, you know, you grow up being in the shadow of New York. It's yeah. the Sinatra thing. If I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. So New York felt like the right place to set this story. And, and we had a lot of fun shooting. Well, Zoe, has, she also does the same thing. She goes to New York, but she has difficulty and she, she feels that maybe it's not for her. Did you ever feel the same way? And uh, yeah, yes and no. Mm. I think it's it's tricky, um, especially in today's day and age where we're constantly bombarded by you know everyone's perfect lives on social media, and and we realize, you know, that everyone's doing all these awesome things, and we kind of sit there every day and realize maybe this maybe this isn't what I need to be doing. I should be doing that. Look at what they're doing. Yeah. So we you know I, I think it's a part of the millennial experience today to sort of have these insecurities about. The, the great things we're all doing in our lives. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I just thought the camera work was also pretty amazing. Um, the, the movie flows, it, you know, it has its, uh, its pauses, but uh, the music kind of carries you through. And I, I looked at the credits and I saw you did the music too, along with somebody else. Which yes, I, yes, we had, a, we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, my, myself and my uh, good friend Dave Seaman, who's uh, actually a New Brunswick native as well, mm. uh, we co-wrote the music together. And then uh, we worked with um, Owen Danoff, who's a friend of ours in Nashville, to produce the score and orchestrate it. And, uh, and it, honestly, it was it was great just being late, late at night, just kind of writing songs on guitar mm. and then throwing stuff to Dave. And Dave will kind of improvise stuff on piano. And it was a real collaborative process bringing it together. Yeah, very much so. And so, but how long did it take to make the film? And oh, did, it, it took about... 
took about two years. Shooting the film took four days, mm -hmm. but it was it was a two year process because it was uh, my wow. thesis film at Columbia and also my producer Taylor Ortega. Uh, it was her thesis as well, and it mm -hmm. was a, a two year process from when we started writing to doing grant applications to pre production and all the way through. And Columbia's process was all kind of crazy with the timeline, but uh, it was it was a long time. But shooting it took four days. Uh, which were very insane. But. Well, we're very, very proud to be able to show the, the film at the festival. It's actually the third time we've shown one of your films. Yeah. We've kind of followed your career <laughs> from its very inception to right now. It's always and nice coming home. Yes, and we're very proud to be able to show it, and I guess you're headed out to L.A. now, too. I am. 2019, I'll be in California. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, but you will be at our screening, yes. too. And so, folks, I need to tell you about this lineup. We're going to be doing a musical program, and as the festival always has one or two shorts prior to a feature film, uh, Zach's is one of the short films prior. The first film is called The Bug, and it's by Dean Cameron, who's from California, actually. I'll, I'll hook you up with him. Yeah, yeah. Burbank, California. And it's also a, a, a musical film about a dancing and singing bug. <laughs> it's a very interesting film. Everything's Fine will be the second film. And then How They Got Over is a documentary by Robert Clem, which focuses on, it's a documentary about African-American gospel choirs. It's a really amazing film um, filled with archival footage. And the great thing is that both you and Robert will be there to do a Q&A with the audience, so it should be a lot of fun. So folks, this will be taking place on Sunday, January 27th, starting at 7 p.m. in Voorhees Hall, room 105, which is located at 71 Hamilton Street. We're a block away from the New Brunswick train station. General admission is $12, and come and say hi to Zach and, and ask him some good questions. Thanks so much for coming. Thank and, you for having and good me. Luck for, good luck with everything. Step one, this isn't fun, and you might pass out by the time.